Let's talk about what a graph is. What is a graph? A graph is a chart that shows comparisons and differences by using groups of organized data. Okay, that's a graph more like if we had a uh, like a science graph. Right? The thing about math is it's so pure and perfect. It doesn't depend on it doesn't have to depend on data. So our graphs are not necessarily Okay, so now I'm gonna get technical on you. You don't have a graph until you draw something on what you're describing, which would be the plane. Okay. All right. So the plane is just like the empty space. The graph is the actual thing that you put the plane in front. The graph is a way to show a function. Yes, exactly. It's a way to so to show a function. A way to show a function. Are there other ways to show functions? that, not the egg, I mean the, the concept that Mitch was, was putting forth, you guys, if you want to move up, you can move up now. Uh, if you didn't quite get that, he said that it's anything where you could just put something in, say, for example, x, and get something out, say, example, y. That's the thing, okay? And a graph is a way to show that via a picture, okay? It's a picture of a graph. Uh, other ways to represent graphs, uh, t-chart, you know, xy chart, uh, an equation, which is normally where we get our graphs from, right? That's how we get our graphs normally. Um, ordered pairs, uh, just saying x equals this and y equals that, x equals this and y equals that a bunch of times, that's a function. Writing a bunch of numbers on the left and a bunch of the numbers on the right and putting arrows from the numbers on the left to the numbers on the right, that's a function, right? Input and output. And it'll always be a function as long as when we put something in, we get only one thing out. That's the other little part of the definition of a function. You have to get one thing out, not several things, not many other things. Okay? What, uh, here's another way to look at a graph. What is a graph, what is a graph made of? What's that? Points. How many points? As many as you want. Infinite. Infinite, we can call it infinite. You got another egg. Oh okay. god. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, it's um, infinite number of points. So when, we draw the, when we draw that graph, when we draw that shape, that curve, that line, whatever it is, we're really drawing all of the points. Right? Don't ever forget that because that's. Being able to, to have me just remind you of that clears a lot of things up right, throughout all of graphing. Let's remember that it's a collection of all the points. An infinite number of points is not the right shape. Right? Each function doesn't have the right shape. It's just the shape that it takes once you start plotting all of the infinitely uh, many points. What does each point represent? It represents so a single point. Does represent some of the function. As well as the input, the input and the output of a specific example of this input gives this output. What does it say you get this output? Right? That's what it is. Okay? So a specific input output. That's it. That's what a point represents. Nothing more, nothing more complicated, nothing more magical or mysterious. Just 
put this in, you get this out. So if we're looking at trying to draw a graph, don't know what it looks like, which will give me a lot more points. A lot more points by doing what? By plugging more numbers in for x and getting more numbers for y. Yes. Yeah, four. Exactly. Dude, you could have one, two. Yeah. I don't right. want one. Oh, you don't want it there. Then. Never mind. Uh, <laughs> plot more points. By the way, I want these eggs back. You just fill out the slip. You can drop the eggs in the box and the slip in that blue box, that little blue box, uh, when it's appropriate. Right now, it would not be an appropriate. So plot more points. Plug in something. So we say for x and get the output. And plot a point. And there it is. Plot that point. And you plot more and more and more points. And if you keep plotting all of the points, which is impossible because there's an infinite number of points, then the graph will just start to melt together and, and all the points will start to, to merge. And they'll be indistinguishable from one another, and we'll start to see this curve or this line take shape. And if we can remember these basics of graphs, and I can just point to it and just say, remember this about a graph. It makes everything so much easier. So now we're talking generally about graphs and functions. Very generally, we have been for a couple of weeks. Uh, now we're going to get specific. We're going to focus in on a specific class of functions called linear functions. And their graphs. And they're called linear functions because what their graphs look like. They're linear. Lines. They're linear. They're linear. Yeah, exactly. The word line is linear. So let's look at some linear functions. And uh, if you, I'm going to have you just plot some points uh, in case you hadn't caught on quite yet. That's fine. You still have time. This y equals. Now, if you know how to graph a line already, I'm not asking you to graph it with the line and the slope. I'm asking you to find some points. Plug in x's, find y's, plot those points until the graph starts to shape. And remember that it, you, the, what you plug in for x is your choice. You don't have to plug in 1, you don't have to plug in 2. You can choose whatever you want. And I want to, we're going to concentrate on what are those easiest things to plug in for x. Time to plug in some points, or plug in some, some values for x, find some points, maybe get a graph going. And again, the choice for ch plugging in something for x is, is ours. We can choose anything we want. We want to choose the easy ones. Plugging in one, not the easiest thing to do. Two, not the easiest thing to do. What would be the easiest number to plug in for x? Zero. 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 Plug in a zero. Why? Because zero times anything is zero, so we're just left with? Negative 10. 10. That gives us this point that we give the special name. Anybody remember the name of the point? The y. The y intercept. The y intercept. Okay. So there's our y intercept. What is I mean, y intercept is not a magical thing that happens just because we see there's a negative 10 there. The reason why we can see this is our y-intercept is because we plugged in 0 for x. We plug in 0 for x. If there is any term with an x in it, it doesn't matter what the function is. It could be have x squared, x to the fourth, square roots of x, all these different things for x. If it's multiplied by x, it goes away. And the only thing left is any number that's just by itself. It's not multiplied by x. So we just get left with 0 minus 10. What's the next easiest thing to plug in for x? 7. Seven. Very good. 7 is the easiest thing to plug in for x after that. Why is that? We can look at it a couple different ways. Either we get the cross cancellation, so 5 minus 10, negative 5. Or by multiplying 5 sevenths by 7, or any multiple of 7, we make sure that when we multiply these, these fractions straight across in the numerator, we get a number that's divisible by 7. 5 over 7, that's 5, minus 10, and we're really saying the same thing. We get the cross cancellation, or when we multiply the fractions together, this is definitely going to be divisible by 7. It's, it's a multiple of 7. 7 is, is a 
factor we made sure of it. So we put in seven, we got out negative five. So one, two, three, four, five, seven, let's make it right there. Uh, what would be? Fourteen. Fourteen would also be fourteen would be negative because it's also a multiple. And it's going to cancel out the denominator at 7. So right here, we have 5 7 times 14. 1, cancel, 2. So we get 5 times 2, that's 10, minus 10. That's 0. So that's 14. That's, well, that's just another 7, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay. And, well, here we had 10. Here we had five. Uh, when we reflected zero, we had zero, right? Like we're starting at negative 10, we're adding zero. Then we're adding five. Then we're adding 10, right? Then we'd add 15 if we went to an x of 21. 21. If we go to x is 21, we'll add 15 to negative 10. Every time we go to the next multiple of seven, we add on another uh, five. We add on another five. What about if I go this direction? If I go into the negatives, negative seven. What will happen then? Subtracting five. Uh, we're subtracting five. We're subtracting five. We're subtracting five. Every time I move over seven, I move up five. Okay. What do we call that? The slope. The slope. The slope is. This is the, the horizontal, because this is what's canceling out with our x. x is that horizontal, right? We plug in an x that's a multiple of 7, it's canceling out with this 7. So 7 is having some kind of control over our horizontal movement. And every time we cancel out that 7, we just wind up getting multiples of 5. Cancel out that 7, right? If we put in 21, we're going to wind up canceling the 7 to get 5 times 3. If we put in 28, I'm getting 5 times 4. And then 35, we're going to get 5 times 5. And just get those multiples of 5 added on to, well, if you want to think of the y intercept negative 10 as a starting point, that, that kind of makes sense. Okay. So, how would you make the function different if you wanted the line go with a slope of 7, over 7, up 5, like lower on the graph? Lower on the graph. Like if you wanted a line under that with the same slope and parallel to it, what would you add to the function? What do you guys think? What would, what would be the only thing that need to be different? Minus 15, minus, like, it's, yeah. it would be 5 over 7x minus a different number, minus a bigger number, so maybe 12. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Good question, good answer. Yeah. <laughs> yes, we want to. If we want to change where it intercepts the y-axis, the y-intercept, then when we plug in zero, because we're talking about, well, one way we could look at it is where we hit the y-axis. If we want to hit a different place in the y-axis, we're talking about when we plug in zero for x. So we just need to make the output when we put zero in be different. Okay. So yeah, anything but minus 10, and we've got a line that has the same slope, but it's somewhere else. So how will we know that when we graph, when we draw the graph of a function, how can we tell just from the equation that it's going to be a line when we graph? No? Can you give me an equation that will make a line? Y equals 2 over 5. Minus eight. Well, that's just a number. X minus eight. X two, two over five x. Two over yeah. So two fifths times x minus eight. Yeah. Will that be a line? Yeah, most likely. Well, we'll start at negative eight. Start at right. It goes for infinity. So it doesn't start or end anywhere. 
but we can start on the y-axis at negative 8. And then we can plug in, what would we pl we're plugging 0, right? That would be starting at negative 8 on the y-axis. Then what would we plug in for x? 5. 5, and then what? 10. And then what about the other direction? Negative. 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 We like to do these steps horizontally that match up with the denominator, that are multiples of the denominator. So we've ever been told here to grab a line and just go y-intercept slope. It's not a magic trick. We're just use, utilizing the, the easiest values to plug in for x. Okay. It just really becomes a game when we go to graph a line. How many points do you need to graph a line? Draw a line. Two. 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 Right. Two. One's not enough. Two is. Two is enough. Three is more than enough. It's not too much, but it's more than enough. So I have two points, and I draw a line between those two points. And there's a third point that I graph, and this graph's supposed to be a line. This is going to end up a line. Right. So two, two points. So it's just a game of how do I find two points quickly? Well, it's just the same as, as we did in the previous slide, plugging some stuff for x. Easiest thing to plug in for x? Multiples of the denominator and zero, just a little bit above that of the scale. Zero and multiples of the denominator. So we move over in fives and we move up by how much each time? Two. Every time we put in the next multiple of five, we might Adding on the next multiple of 2. Put in 10, we add 4, put in 15, we add 6. Well, that's cool. Like, you, like yeah. The numerator is how much you go up if you multiply by the multiple of the numerator. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's so much easier. And you can do an egg for that, just, just for smiling about it. <laughs> All right. So, yeah. It makes it awesome. And it's not magic, it's just math. And it's magic. No, it's not magic. <laughs> yeah, so it's <laughs> it's not that that's the rule and it's not the, the right way to grab a line. It's just somebody's done all the work for you and told you, well, put a point at negative eight, right? Whatever you see there, and then go up to and to the right five, because they're both positive, and up is positive, and to the right is positive. Mm -hmm. What? And then you're good. And then you're good. That's all you need. Two points. Those are the easiest points to find. Come on. They go up to and over five. There they are, easiest points to plot. Come on. What are you saying come on? <laughs> that is that's good. Oh. I've been doing this for as many years as I've been doing it, and you want to draw it not hideous lines. It's not the best. But anyway, when we draw this line, We've said this kind of like a lot of times, but when you draw this line, what are we really saying about a function? A linear function. Okay. But when I like when I make that leap and I stop plotting points and I just draw this line, what am I saying? You're assuming. Assuming what? That the line continues in a perfect line with the rise of two and the rise of five forever. Yes. There's not some ad mora ad like not some odd point out that will uh, suddenly like spike the line uh -huh. in some way. And then that gets really to my point is that we're saying that all of the points will land on this line, right? We're drawing the infinite number of points by drawing this line. The only way to draw an infinite number of points is to draw a continuous curve of some kind, whether it be straight or not straight. I can't, I can't ever plot all the points. I have to draw a straight line through. Yeah. So will there only be like, Little wave motions or parabolas at the origin somewhere on the line, or can they happen like way off infinitely at your line? It's really good because we don't like things to happen way off there, right? Yeah, because then you because we like to draw like this things. and have stuff happen here. What we forget is that it goes on for infinity, right? That's what these arrows mean. So yeah, you can have. I mean, a graph can look straight right here. But way out here at a positive 800 million, that's where we start to see some kind of a curve happen. It could? Down. Sure. Why would that happen? Like Babylon could do that? Not this one, no. But this one we know that it will always, like every time I go over five, I will just go up two more. There's no argument on that, right? With Nothing radical is going to happen. The, 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 the pattern is not going to change at all. The pattern will just be like, a, like an infinite flight of stairs. 
up two to the right five. Plug in the next multiple of five, add another two to the previous one. Plug in the next multiple of five, add on two to the previous output. And it'll never stop following that pattern. Okay. But you can't. But have some one functions that will like do funky stuff way away from the array. Yeah, some functions will be okay, so some functions will look like, say, like that. Yeah. Okay. Well, that could happen. I mean this shape could be way over here. Why not? So it'd be like so it could be like straight from the origin all the way over and then do a curve? Yeah, I mean like so this continues on forever, right? So then this shape would continue down like this, let's say that this 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 graph does. Uh, get all of this stuff to group it together. So we may we may go to graph it and it looks pretty uh, straight. Straight, but what do we know about way up there? There's a funky, there's this uh, funky thing. Like that. Come on. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, that could happen. It just depends on what the function how the function is written as like as an equation, let's say. Um, and we'll look at that. Right. We're starting with lines. There's not a lot of crazy variations with lines. They go in a straight line. Sorry, called lines. So we don't see this. But once we get to parabolas, we could easily write the equation for a parabola that, well, this is a parabola. Once we know how, like, what makes these guys tick, we could easily put the parabola way over here, way away from the origin, so that we'd have to go way over here to see it. So, so what would make you anticipate that funky thing if the straight part was on the origin when you graphed it? This is the kind of function it is. So I'll tell this, this kind of function uh, would probably be a result of so something times x cubed plus something times x squared plus something times x plus a number. Okay. So the cubic function. Cubic functions look like that. Uh, so quadratic functions look like this. Yeah. Could it also work that same way if you had number plus x times x cubed like minus? Number yeah. x squared? Yeah, because this b could be negative b. Like a negative b could be anything. It could be negative i. Like it could be any number. Yeah. So we'll look at that. What, what could cause a, a function to behave that way? Because we yeah, are like just graphing normal, and you only graph like four points just right around the origin, you wouldn't know if there was right. a. Well, if the. Yeah, yeah, if the. Yeah. We. Early on, you're, you're going to graph some points and you're really just not going to expect, know what to expect. And on the tests, uh, some people kind of knew to expect a parabola on one of those graphs and other people didn't. But they didn't mark them off for not knowing that it was a parabola. They drew the points and they connected them and then that was fine. Okay. To know that there's some funkiness somewhere takes a little bit more advanced math. Right? If you're just plotting points, how would you know? Who points a pl uh, plots a point? It's like a hundred and hundred. Everyone does like four or five. Yeah. Well, in this case, when when you plot say zero, zero is going to give you an output that's way up there, right? Oh yeah. Because that's where that function is. But there there could be. Uh, yeah, I mean, like this this function. If if it was on the same set of axes, we'd be doing some crazy stuff. Like, it, what would we be getting? kind of keeps going up like this, what would we be getting when we put like zero in here? We'd be getting two If I put zero in for this function, and it's on this set of axes right here. You would get two. You'd get two different points. Yeah. Not this, don't worry about this function, just for this function. Yeah, you'd get two different points on the x-axis. No, I'm plugging in an x. I'm plugging in an x of zero. Uh, Where is the output? Here? There? It's like 100 miles up. It's like 100 miles up, yes. This guy is shooting up like this, very steep already. You can put zero in here, but you're probably going to get, you know, like a thousand or something crazy, way, way, way up there. Because that's where this guy's headed. To get a, normal, a more normal y value, you'd have to come over here to 10 or 15 to start to get these more normal values. Yeah. So if you put in the number for y, would you get two points since there's two? Uh, yeah, we put in a number for y, which we will do at some point. 
If we want to find both of these x values that have this y, at some point we will want to do that. And in the case of this guy right here, there are some y values that will give you 1, 2, 3 x values. That's, what, that's what's in chapter like, I don't know, 8 or 9 or 10 or something like that. So can those two ever combine? Combine, how do you mean it? <laughs> Connect the um, edge of that one to the top of the parabola. Like, Just kind of force a curve here? Yeah, could that ever happen? Something That's, funky like that? I mean, if you took the equation that defines this guy and the equation that defines this guy and you combine them mathematically, this is not going to happen. Like, just a curve like that. Something else is going to happen. Well, <laughs> I don't think we'll have to talk about it some yeah. other time, I think. <laughs> but yeah, they can be combined. Just do it just kind of, um... <laughs> How they get combined, different, you can add them together, you can subtract them, you can divide them, you can multiply them, you can put one function inside the other function. But we'll talk about that another time. Let's get back to lines. These are great questions. Great questions. These. Oh. Okay. Um, now let's talk more about lines. What are we talking about? Oh, so what Will the equation look like, like how can I look at the equation and tell, hey, that, when I graph that, that's going to be a line. I already gave you an example. Well, yeah, yeah. There's a, a fraction. Okay, a fraction. Let's call it fraction m. There's that fraction. Just a, not a number hanging out in space, right? That's not going to have a graph. Okay, let's just say plus b, like b could be negative, so then we'd have a minus. Well, isn't that fraction multiplied by x, and what's it all equal to? If you can write it in what we call slope-intercept form, then it's, it's a line. That's the definition of a linear function in the equation form. How do I know it is going to be a line when I graph it? If I can re even if I have to rearrange it, if it can look like this, then the equation is on a line. Okay? So like uh, y, let's say y minus x equals 7, is that a linear function? No. Okay. The question is, does it look like this, but could it look like this? Yes, it could look like that. It could, could look like that. y equals x, minus, x plus 7. Add x to both sides. Right. Remember that from algebra, do the same thing to both sides of the equation. Add x, that's the same thing. Negative x plus x is zero, and over here we just get x plus seven. Now, does it look like slope-intercept form? Yeah, there's no. Your m is just what? one in that. Yes, right your m is one. Oh, okay. yeah. Let's talk about that because you said fraction. You said a fraction. What about if it's uh, y equals just three x? Say minus one. That's it's three over one. Yeah, it is a fraction. It's three over one. You go up three, you go to the right one. So yeah, that works too. And one is a fraction. One over one. So, how about y equals x? What's that going to look like? It's a line. It's a line. Yeah, it's is the x-axis? It's going to be on the x, but it's going to go vertical. So it's like, it's this. Yeah. yeah. Let's put some things into this function. Wait, what were you going to say? Right, so, I'm here, it's the y-axis, and I'm here, and it's the x-axis. So if y well, it doesn't have to be if, on the y-axis. If x is 1, then y is also equal to Ah, if x is one, one, look what's two, up two. here. It would be diagonal right through the origin. Yeah. There we go. You got to think about what does this function do when I plug in something for x? If I plug in five, I get out five. If I plug in seven, I get out seven. Plug in negative two, I get out negative two. Plug in zero, I get out zero. Right? Cuts it perfectly in half. But really, since the plane goes on forever, we have to graph. So if x equals half. y, it's the other diagonal. If x equals y or y equals x, that's the same thing. So how do you get it like? You tell negative me. Equal. Negative y equals negative x. Yeah. <laughs> negative y equals negative x. That's a good idea. Let's check it out. Negative y equals negative x. Let's plug in 5 there. And negative, negative, negative 5. Negative 5. Okay, so negative y equals negative 5. Let's 
Let's keep track of this. What did I just plug in for y or for x? Five. I plugged in five. five. Now it's negative five when I plug it in. Negative y equals negative five. So it's y equal. Negative. Negative. It's five. If negative y equals negative five, then positive y equals positive. So it would be y equals negative x. Uh, let's just make one of them negative. Yeah. No. Y equals negative x. That way, everything you plug in for x it comes out the opposite for y. Right? So if I plug in 1 for x, negative 1 for y. 1 for x, negative 1 for y. 2 for x, negative 2 for y. And there we go. Cuts it the other way. Yeah, you plug it straight up and down and you've made a diagonal grid. <laughs> yeah, they do, they do they intersect at a 90 degree angle. You can have a y equals x axis and a y equals negative x axis. I don't know what that one is. Oh, you get another one. <laughs> another one? What do you mean another one? <laughs> keep split. <laughs> Just keep splitting them. In, yeah. Like this one? Essentially, yeah. Okay, how, how would we get a line like this? I don't really know. Y equals one half x? Let's see. Be, yeah, y equals one half x, and then the other one would be y equals negative one half x. Like this way? <laughs> let's just check it out. <laughs> so let's see if this if, if that would work. Y but then how would you explain the other one, Mitch? One half x, hold on. One half x. One half x. Let's put in something we can divide by two easily, like four. four. Okay. okay. When we put in four into this guy, which one is this? Uh, y equals Y equals, x. y equals x. That's y equals x. This is y equals x right there. When I put in 4, what do I get for y? 4, 4, 4. four. If I put 4 in here, do I get out 4? 2. two. Get out 2. 4, two. not 4, 4, 2. Yeah, that one. Mm. That's what So would it be negative? Then would it be y over 2 equals 2? No, y equals 2x. Oh, so this would be more like y equals 2x. Yeah. And then the other one would be y equals 1 half x, and then you just on the other side and split with the negative. So we could go this one. This one would be what? Y equals 1 half x. Yeah. Okay. This is all kind of approximate. But yeah, like y equals 1 half x could be and that graph. On the other side of the world, would be, would be y equals negative 1 half x, and then y equals negative 2x. Exactly. Wow. Y equals negative 2x. Y equals negative one half x. We solved world hunger. Well, <laughs> we solved well, hunger. Well, we. Very good, very good. Our strength. Right. Uh, I, I didn't do anything. Done. You guys just asked really good questions. That's the thing. That's what makes you great at us. Um, so, <laughs> there we go. Like, what do all of these equations have in common? Every one of these has, a, has one thing that is exactly the same. They have an x in it. They have a negative and a positive. Well, both of them have, like, in terms of, like, for every... Like, well, this, is a, this is a function. This is a function. They don't have a constant. Uh, they don't have a constant. Or do they? What they do is just zero. Uh, their constant is yeah. zero. Their y-intercept is zero. When you plug in zero, you get out zero. Yeah. Yeah. Because the only thing that there, there is is something times x. So if I plug in 0, I'll get out 0. Put in 0, get out 0 for all of these. All of them. Interesting. What about this? Let's just uh, use this thought experiment. What if we have a 0 times x? Well, what if it would just be 0 for everything? Would it be a point one forever? It would yeah. just be one point. <laughs> yeah, would it would just be the origin the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> it would just be, OK, that's, a good, well, that's an interesting way to say it. It would just be the origin, and this is what I want to concentrate on. The whole time. What does oh, that wait, mean? No. It, wouldn't be, it would just be on the x-axis, though. It would be on the x-axis. You'd still have to plug in a number. You just wouldn't go up or down. Have yeah, when I plug in uh, 7,000 into this function, what do I get for y? Zero. Zero. So I got here and I said, this is 7,000. I get out zero. When I plug in negative 500, you get zero. You get zero. Like for any x that I put in, I'll get out zero. How about y equals 5? Then it would just be 5 over x equals 
five. You don't have. You okay, so I, this is the thing that I, I see. This right? Is it this? Is it like this? Is it vertical? It, it, you you have can't that plug in any y x. equals five. Okay, let's just make it. Let's do this. Y equals zero. X plus five. Then you, you have a straight line like this. Down. Yeah. Straight on and up and down. Yeah. yeah. Or is it horizontal? Yeah. It's straight up and down on the fifth, on five, on the x-axis. All right, let's talk about that. Is this y equals five? That's what I'm gonna ask. Well, where is y five? No, it wouldn't be that. Where? On the y axis. Right here, one, two, three, four, five. Actually, this graph is mostly incorrect. It's almost 100% incorrect because the only place that it's true is right there. That's the only place where y is equal to five. What's y equal to down here? Negative, not five, right? Yeah. It would still be um, horizontal. It just would be. It would so, so yeah, it's just a point because your y equals no. five. No, right? no, 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 no. You'd still have your one. Y equals zero times one. So you'd still have your one on the x-axis, but then you'd have five, so your y would still be equal to five. Let's, let's so use this guy right now, let's plug in one for x, like you're saying, zero times one plus five is? Here, let's keep track of it this way. One, in for x, gives five. me five for y. One, five. You'd have a y right Two, there. gives me five. always five. Two, five, three, five, four, five, a million, five, negative, five, five. <laughs> I always get five. So you just have a line horizontal. Horizontal at y equals five. Yeah. Okay. Look at every point on this line. This one, this one, this one, this one, this one. What do they all have in common? Five. Uh, y is five. <laughs> this right here, this horizontal line, this is all of the places in the plane where y is five. Regardless of x, y is always five. So if x equals five, it's just a straight up and down line on yes. x is five. This line right here, all the points on this line are all the points in the plane and the only ones where x is 5 only. And both of them will intersect sort of at their origin, which is 5, 5. 5, they will intersect at 5, 5. Yeah. Now if x equals negative 3, well then 1, 2, 3 here, vertical line there, x equals negative 3, it's a vertical line. So if x equals something, it's a vertical line, and if y equals just a number, then it's a horizontal line, which a lot of people make a mistake because they think x is horizontal, and y is vertical. Right? And with that, you gotta think about what makes the equation true. Right? Only when x is five. If x isn't five, then it's not true. So if I'm anywhere but right here, or there, or there, x won't be five. So on the y equals zero times x plus five, mm -hmm. how are you getting like one and two? Because I thought anything times zero was zero. You still plug it in. But you put, yeah, yeah you put you in, so now you put the number for x, and it always gets multiplied by zero, rather like opposed to choosing zero for x. Uh, Any number we choose gets multiplied by zero. Oh, okay. Okay? Horizontal lines. What kind of a what kind of a slope does a horizontal line have? What kind of a slope here? We gotta think rise over run, right? Think about rise over run. Zero rise. Okay, where's that? There's our rise over run. Five, seven. Up five over seven. So if we try to count that slope out on a horizontal line, it would be zero. 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 Zero over, it doesn't matter, really. Imaginary it's number. Zero. No, not imaginary. <coughs> zero. zero over. It would just be zero because there is no. Because let's say we start here and we try to get over there. Oh, we're going to go rise of zero. And we're going to go up zero. Zero over what? Well, it doesn't matter. Zero over five, zero over two, zero over 12, zero over anything. It's zero. zero. And then the other one's undefined. Yes. <laughs> Remember the video? Right in Parsons class. That means remember the video? Yeah. <laughs> yes, also, so if we try to go from here to there on a vertical line, what's the rise? Well, whatever it is. Whatever you want. Because the run will always be zero. Why do we call this undefined? Undefined function. Because you can't divide by zero. Yeah. So we call this undefined. 
So if you go to find the slope of the line, you get zero. What kind of a, of a line is that? Slope is zero. Oh. Push, push. This is zero. Push. Slope. Horizontal. Horizontal line. Okay. If we get something divided by zero, it's a defined slope. It's a vertical line. What about just generally a positive slope? What kind of a line is that going to make? It's going to make a slope that angles up to the right. Yes. If I go positive slope, that would mean positive number over positive number. So I'm going to go up and I'm going to go right. It doesn't matter how little I go up or right, I'm going to always wind up going up and to the right. Right? Rising from left to right. Even if I do a negative over a negative, that's still that's a positive number, right? Negative divided by negative is positive. I can go down, I can go left. I still have a positive. So positive slopes go up and to the right. They rise as you go from left to right. How about negative slopes? Down, 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 to, the right. down and to the right. Because okay. so, for a negative slope, you need either a negative number over a positive or a, a positive over a negative. Which means we either go down and to the right that would be down and to the right, rise over run, or up and to the left. Oh, oh. Up and to the left. We're able to look at it, we got a negative slope, we got something like from left to right, goes down. So you could go down to the left on the positive slope. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we could have a, we could have A over B or negative A over negative B. And then we went down, then we went down, we'd have to go to the left then. Still, we get this up and to the right slope, rising from left to right. So zero slope, what kind of line? Horizontal. Vertical line has positive slopes, right up, and negative slopes. Left to right and left to right down. Exactly. Okay. Let's talk about a equation. A, a function that will make a line, but maybe it doesn't look quite like we are used to. We kind of talked about that. But let's talk about something like uh, 3x minus 4y equals 24. Will that make a line? Yeah. How can you be sure? Um, because once you move x over, you still have a slope, and then you'll divide by four, uh -huh. negative 4 on the y. Okay, and then mm -hmm. you'll just have a fraction slope mm -hmm. in the Three over get divided. four. So plus twenty. Exactly. We have twenty, 20. plus six. Right. Yeah. Here, twenty twenty. So Here's no. Five. Yeah. <laughs> Minus six. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, we can rewrite it in slope intercept form. That's one way we can be sure that it's linear. Okay. So as we start to see these more and more and more equations that look like this. number times x plus number times y equals constant number. Uh, we realize it could be rewritten in slope-intercept form, so indeed it's linear. But if all we want to do is graph this line, there's an easier way. You don't have to go through all the trouble of graph it or you know, rewriting it so it's in slope-intercept form. All we need, what do we need to graph a line? Two points. We need an input and output and another input and an output. Okay. Yeah. okay. Let's look at this equation. What would be an easy way to find one input output pair? What would we plug in? Zero. zero. For what? X. 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 We're plugging zero for X, we'll get negative four Y equals twenty-four, so Y equals negative six. That gives us the point zero, negative six. And then mm -hmm. what we would have to do is the rise over the run. You don't even have to do that. Here's something that's maybe a little counterintuitive. What do we need? We need one more point. Is there one more point that would be easy to find? Plug in zero for y. Plug in zero for y. You might not think of plugging in something for y, but you can. There's no reason why you can't. You plug in zero for y, you also get this really easy thing. We're going to plug in zero for y. We get 3x equals 24, so x equals 8. There's another point there. That's all we need. We know it's going to be a line. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, let's 
enough. We need two points, we can find two points easily. We don't have to rewrite the equation. We don't have to solve the line, get y by itself. We don't have to do any of that. So those are just multiple of the 24, right? Factors. Or factors. They're both factors of 24. That's why I picked them. You know, but if I wrote 3x minus 4y equals 15, uh, that's great for finding x, but when I try to find y, I get this fraction. But most of the time, when they both give you an equation in this form, they're going to kind of make it convenient so that those are both factors of 24. All right, let's see how things are going. I'll give you uh, x, 8, x, plus 3y, equals 15. Okay, I'm going to graph that line. So any way that you come up with to find two points, that's all that is important. In this case, what would be the easiest way to find a couple points? Huh? Put zero in for x and put zero in for y. So if we can just do this, zero for x, zero for y, figure out what we get to we'll have two points and it's a line, so maybe that's enough. Put in zero for x, you get 10, 10, y. 10 for y. Put in zero for y, maybe you get six for x. Zero ten. Oh, positive. A line with positive slope, yeah. Okay. What would be the easiest way to find a couple of points for this guy? Zero and three. Put in zero and put in three. Zero will give us negative two. And three will give us. Because all we have to do is realize the threes are going to cancel, so we're going to be subtracting seven. Right, we're going to come down seven from negative two. What if we plug in uh, six? And we're going to subtract seven from negative nine. Negative sixteen. We're just coming down seven, coming down seven, coming down seven. If I go to nine, I'll be coming down another seven. And so on and so on. Negative two right there, put in zero, get out negative two. Let's move over three and subtract seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There we go. Two points, make a line. I have a question. Yeah. So on now the first one, if you take 30 mm -hmm. and you make each of the x and y's divisible by 30. If you divide them each by 30, if you divide negative 5x by that, you get negative 6. And then if you divide 3y by 30, you get 10y. And then if you put a you point get, you need on, to be getting y over 10. If you divide 3y from 30, you're just talking about 30 divided by 3. Can I see the pen? <laughs> okay. I, <laughs> no, no. Okay, so if you take your constant here yeah. and you put it over each one of these to divide it, you get 30 divided by negative 5x, and then you get 30 divided by 3y, then you get negative 6x. You get negative 6 over x. x is in the denominator. Negative 6, okay, over x, and then you get. 10 over y, uh -huh. then if you said, okay, this is your x, and you went to your graph and went, that's negative 6, uh -huh. and put it here, and then if you went to 10, that you would call that your y, uh -huh. since it's over y, and you would go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and then you automatically have your line. Does that work for everything? Yes, because essentially what you're doing, I mean, you're, mathematically, this is kind of uh, nonsense. But, I mean, it does give you your x and your y, but basically what you're doing is just, like in this case, you're ignoring the y. Like you're not thinking about the y at all. You know what else we don't think about the y? When you plug in zero for y. Yeah. Right? That's like, that's yeah, kind of work. ignoring the x too, Well, once so you, the way you ignore the x when you do this step too, which is the same as when you plug in zero for x. So we don't have to think about it too much. Like I know that if I plug in x, I'm just going to divide 30 by 3, which is what you just did here. Right? 
figure out what y is. Yeah. So you did the same thing. You're just kind of shortcutting it, saying, well, I know that when I plug in 0 for x, I'm just going to wind up dividing this by the coefficient of y. Vice versa, you're going to divide this by the coefficient of x when I plug in 0 for y. Right? So what this all means, like 10 over y, that's a, like a whole different story. Like, well, what's y? This doesn't say that y is equal to 10, yeah. right? But you're right. If I, if I take the 30 and I divide it by the coefficient of y and the coefficient of x, then I figure out what x and y are. So we're just capitalizing on the same idea, kind of ignoring one term or the other by plugging zero in. OK. Uh, just for the sake of But you might look at the notes later. Oh, God. <laughs> say that there's a point here at negative 8, 1, and one over here at 10, okay? So there's two points, and let's assume there's a line that goes through those two points. Now, I'm not wanting to hear some kind of a formula. We'll develop the formula. But if I want to find the slope of this line, all I want to find is this vertical change. Okay, this vertical change. You know what? There's a, a sciencey math way of saying the change in y. Delta. Delta y. We were taking physics. Physics. So in physics, we talk about delta t a lot. The change in time. Change in x, which is the position. But in this case, we just Delta just means the change in something, the change in y. That's really what we're talking about here. Okay. From here to here, the y value of this guy to the y value of this guy, how much did y change? Eight. 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 How'd you come up with that? You just count it up to eight? One minus nine. Well, so nine minus one, either way. And then, yeah, either way. So, if so you to the second point. If I take nine minus the one, right, this this total distance minus this little guy here, I will get the leftover, eight. Okay, so nine minus one, eight. The vertical change, delta y, is equal to eight. From here to there, that's what we'll call delta x. You don't have to worry too much about calling it delta x, but good, it's the change in x. From this value, or from this point to that point, how much did x change? 18. Changed 18? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Can you just count up? Here, in this case, we did 9 minus 1 and got the vertical change, the change in y. Can we just do uh, the same thing? Like, we did 9 minus 1, can we do 10 minus negative 8? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it turns out we can. 10, 10 minus negative 8. And it's 10 plus 8 is 18. And then right over right is 8 over 18 is 4 over 9. There we go. Uh, rise to the one. Delta y, delta x, 9 minus 1 over 10 minus negative 8. In this case, it's 8 over 18. We can simplify that to 4 over 9. Can we always do this? Can we always just take the y and minus that y and take this x and minus that other x? We should be about it. it. Yeah. I mean, well, yeah, of course, we're talking about lines. Okay. okay. Only lines so have slopes. Lines, yes. With lines, yes. Yeah. With lines, yes. We can find the slope. And if you're worried about it being negative, look at this example right here. This was negative 8. When we took 10 minus negative 8, we didn't actually, we didn't actually gain. We got this whole 10 right here, from here to there, and gained this 8 from there to there. So we got the whole span, the, the whole vertical change from, from negative to positive, the 
old 18 we got by taking 10 minus negative 8. In general, if I give you a line that goes through two points, whether it's these two points or some other line that goes through these two points, whatever it is, let's call this point 2, this point 1, or what? I can call this two, I can call this one, I can call this two, I can call this one, it doesn't matter. Uh, if this has an x and a y, which it does, that's just the nature of points on a graph, or in the, in the plane, this also has an x and a y, then I can take this y minus this y, right? Well, now, now if I call these both y, they're going to be confusing, right? So we give them slightly different names. I will call this y1, that's the y from the first point. And y2 is the, the y from the second point. And likewise, x1 would be the x from the first point, and x2 would be the x from the second point. So we'll just take the thing we called y2, we'll subtract the thing we call y1. That's the y from the second point, the y from the first point. And of course, if, if this is going to be like our ending point, our second point, then we'd always have to start with this when we subtract or if we're going to do say 9 minus 1 to get how far it is from there to there, we're going to have to start at 10 and subtract negative 8 to get the change from there to there. So that means we'll do x2 minus x1 as opposed to x1 minus x2. So just got to keep that order. It doesn't matter which one you call point 1 and point 2 as long as this is from the same point. Right? And by default then, if these are from the same point, these will be Let's give this a try. Let's find the slope between two points. The slope of the line that goes to those two points. Okay. So Let's say that I am a kind of person who calls this point two and this point one. Just gotta participate in this thing. Uh, so, say I call that point two and that point one. Well, I'm gonna get this y minus that y over this x minus what's the other x? Negative seven. Uh, minus negative seven. That's so I get negative 5 over 16. Oh. Wait. Did you get Did you get 5 and 16? No. Oh, OK. Yeah, you did. Because well, I, I thought maybe this happened. So I thought maybe this happened. Maybe you called this 1 and this 2. Well, that's still going to be 5. That's going to do. Now this is 2, so we'll go 3 minus negative 2, right? over negative 7 minus 9 plus 3 plus 2, that's 5. Negative 7 minus 9, negative 16. 5 over 16, right? Negative divided by positive is negative divided by positive is, is negative. So this is negative 5 sixteenths. Positive divided by negative, still. Right? A number that's it's 5 sixteenths to the left of 0. That's what both of these numbers are. They're both negative 5 sixteenths. Let's do it for a couple of lines. Um, I'll just give you the points. About uh, 5, 12, Find the slope for those two points. And, uh, 
What do we get for this one? 3 over 2. 3 over 2. And for this one? 3 over 2. Okay, what would you say about those two numbers? They are the same. They are parallel. same. They're equivalent. They're congruent. They're exactly the same. Whatever. Okay, so that's what the numbers tell us. If these numbers tell us the slope of a couple of lines, they both have a slope of 3 halves, so what the lines you would say are what? Parallel. Parallel. Are the slopes parallel? No. No. What are the slopes? 3 over 2 equal to, three over two three equal to each other. Exactly. Yeah. Well, but the lines are parallel. 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 Okay, so that means we want to make the distinction. Okay. Oh, the slopes are parallel. Slopes can't be parallel. Slopes are numbers. Numbers can't be parallel to each other. They have all sorts of twists and turns. They're not parallel. But lines can be parallel, and parallel lines have the same slope. You gotta have the same slope to be parallel, right? If I have a line that is up three and over two, remember that that is not to scale. Then a parallel line. Yeah. What are parallel lines? Lines that slope. Okay. Yes. Exactly right. It's the exact right answer. But in a, uh, in a uh, term. layman's terms, I guess. The two lines, lines that never touch. They don't never touch. touch. Ever intersect. They never intersect. So if I don't want them to intersect way over there, or way over there, even if I go for infinity in both directions, then they would have to have the same pattern. and have to go up 3 and over 2, right? But if I went up 4 and over 2, what would happen with these two lines? They would cross. Eventually they'd be where? way out there. Where out? Which way? Anyway, will they intersect this way? Yeah. These will cross somewhere out there, right? Because I'm rising more, but I'm running the same. Twelve points out, right? Well, it depends on where we are. It depends on how far away the lines are from each other right now. So any bunker built on the side of the hill is built exactly to the same slope as the hill? <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> Yes? Yeah. <laughs> what if I'm going 1 over 2? Now where am I going to intersect? Down. Down, down over there. there. Right? Not here. They're going to get further apart as I go to the right. But as I come back this other way, they're going to intersect with each other. Let's look at both of these slopes. Which slope is a bigger number? This slope or this slope? That this one, 3 halves, 1 half. 3 halves. 3 halves is bigger than 1 half. Do you have a question? No. I don't think so. Come on. I'm good. Okay. You get an A. Yeah, you like. I know, but it's a really stupid question. No question is stupid. You get an A. It's better to ask me the question than to have all this going on and okay, you know, so competing with it. If they're like going to cross this way yeah. and these would be going out, would these ever cross? Like Not if they're straight lines. Because to do that, like they'll, they'll, they're shooting off like this. To cross, they'd have to curve at some point. Infinitely go further than they can. Yeah, okay. like an infinitely far apart. Two lines are only going to be able to cross once. So if they cross over here, they can't cross over there. And if they cross over here, they can't cross down there. Okay. Infinity is a mind blowing thing. It's good, it's good to ask questions about infinity. If you make your lines go over infinity, then the distance between them is the exact same as how far they are, since it's also infinity. What? <laughs> Well, now you're saying infinity so equals infinity, so which isn't necessarily true. Some infinities are bigger than other infinities. Okay, well that's okay. just worse. It's also the default How can they be? Oh, is it yeah. the same? Oh, I don't know that. Some infinities are bigger than other infinities. That's just a mathematical term. Uh, it's a mathematical so term. Okay, that happens to me. Okay, oh, hey, hey, we're doing good, but now we're doing, we were doing good, now we're doing bad. Okay, so for lines to be parallel, they have to have same slope. the same slope. Yes, exactly the right answer. Otherwise, if they have even slightly different slopes, at some point, way to the right or way to the left, they're going to cross. Um, what would you say about a line that has a bigger slope than another line? Meaning the number that is its slope is bigger than the other, like if this was... 1 over 2 and this was 3 over 2. What would you say about this line versus this line? The one that's 3 over 2 is flatter. 3 over 2 is flatter? Uh, 
No, one three over two is steeper. One over two get, is flat. It's the same horizontal, right? Mm -hmm. We're moving over two, over two, over two, over two. But each time this one's going up three, up three, up three. This one's only going up one. Yeah. It's not as steep. So bigger slope means steeper line. Let's talk about perpendicular lines. What does perpendicular mean? Intersect at 90 degrees. Intersect at 90 degrees. Okay? So parallel lines need the exact same slope. Now we're going to look at what kind of slope two perpendicular lines need. Reciprocal. Opposite reciprocal. Opposite reciprocal. So let's start there. Let's start with an example. So perpendicular lines uh, have opposite reciprocal slopes. Example, if uh, line one has m equal to 3 fourths and line two is perpendicular, then let's say m1 and m2 is equal to negative 4 thirds. Now I'm going to prove this to you with this picture. Are you ready? Yeah. Oh, it's just like what Mitch and I found out with the, um, the when we found the spider web where we had oh. multiple diagonals, they were all opposite when they, yeah, when they the two they were all perpendicular. No, I see you had one half and negative one half. That's not opposite reciprocal, it's one half and negative two. Okay. But we did yeah. get that. We did wind up getting that. So we had reciprocals in there, yeah. just not. Not on purpose, not because we're yeah. looking for perpendiculars. All right, so, everybody put ready? Hey, look up here. I'm the, I'm the star. <laughs> Let's say, then we just take a look at this, this slope right here, this line. Okay, let's call this A. Let's call this B. All right. Well, by the nature of, of slopes, rise over run, this, this is perpendicular too, right? So far, all we have done is, is say that we go up, a and over B. So what's the slope? What's the slope of this line then? A over B. Exactly. A over B. Right? M equals A over B for this line. We haven't really done anything. We haven't started to prove anything. We're just saying the slope of the positive slope of this line. But for any perpendicular lines, if one has a positive slope, the other one's going to have to have a negative slope, right? You agree? Yeah. yeah. Positive slope, we gotta come into the other direction, a negative slope, to get perpendicular. Ooh. All right, so now we're gonna try and prove that this guy has the opposite reciprocal slope of this guy. So I'm gonna look at the slope of this one, and I, so I gotta look at the rise over the run, right? And, and with slopes, it doesn't matter how, how far up and over I go, the ratio is just always gonna be the same, right? If, if I'm on a line that's 3 fourths, I go up three and over four. So I can go up six and over eight. Right? The ratio of the rise of the run is the same. So I can go up as high as I want and then over should give me the right ratio. So I'm gonna go up and over. But here's the thing, I'm gonna choose to go up B, the same amount that this is horizontal. I can do that, I can choose, I can go up B, I can go up 17, it doesn't matter, but I choose to go up B. So it just remains to show that this is A, right? So that's what we're gonna show. So that's 90 here and here, and this is also 90, that's just by construction. Now let's look at the angles. Let's call this angle light green. Let's call this other angle uh, red. Dark red. So that's a triangle. What's this angle? Right. 90. What would I get if I add this angle to this angle? 90. 90, right? 90 plus 90 is 180. That's how many angles or how many degrees are in a triangle. Okay? If I were to add this angle and this angle, what would I get? 90. So how big is this angle? If this red plus this angle is 90, it would have to be green, right? Red plus green is 90, so red plus mystery angle is 90, so mystery angle must be green. What's this angle plus this angle? 90. Oh, so green plus red, red has to be 90. This is red. Which means the triangles are congruent. Yes, they, have, they are similar because they have all the same angles and they're congruent because this side 
is equal to that side. The, the, the corresponding sides are congruent. Which means that this must be, must be, well, the opposite of A. Like if I move that direction. So what's the slope of this perpendicular line? D over D over A, whatever. It's the opposite reciprocal of this. Or that line. It's just absolute 100% proof that if two lines are perpendicular, they have to have opposite reciprocal slopes. So if you find the slopes of two lines and they are the same slope, then the two lines are what? And if you find that they're opposite reciprocals, and if they're not the same and they're not opposite reciprocals, then the lines are neither. Neither. Right? Right? So there's not another lines. word for it. It's just not either one of those two things. <laughs> just two lines. Just two lines that intersect just somewhere, lines, but not at 90 lines. degrees. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let's take a look back here at this uh, delta y, delta x thing. Okay. What I want to establish for you here is that the slope of the line is just what we call the rate of change. Okay. Anybody need to give me an example of a rate of change? I'm sure you've heard it somewhere. 20 kilometers an hour. Miles per hour per second. Let's just go for an hour. 20 kilometers per hour. That's pretty slow, but 20 kilometers per hour is a rate of change. Right. If I look at a line and I find its slope, Okay, in, this, in this case, 8 versus 18. If y is in kilometers and x is in hours, then what's the slope? It's 8 kilometers per 18 hours. Okay. What if y is dollars and x is, well, still hours? Well, I got $8 for 18 hours. That's an acceleration. It's not good. Uh, well, China. let's change it. Maybe, maybe y is uh, what eight is dollars and x is minutes. Eight dollars and eighteen minutes. So that's better. Okay, that's right. Let's think, but it's better. Yes. Okay. So if you have eighteen dollars, mm -hmm. so an hour. Yeah. So that's still a rate of change, and it yeah. can be put into a line form, but that would just be a regular graph. Well, if yeah. lines are regular graphs, graphs, then yeah, it's a linear graph. Yeah, we could uh, we could write a, a linear equation that has eighteen dollars an hour in it. Like, let's say you show up to work, right? And uh, how, do we, how are we going to get like a y-intercept? Well, we could show up with an amount of money. We can have forty-five dollars when we show up to work, right? So the amount of money that I have can be given by 45, right? That's because I started with $45. Zero hours go by, I still have $45. I quit my job before I start, still have $45. If I make $18 an hour, I'm going to make more money, right? So I'm going to add money on to $45. How much? Well, it's $18 for 18 times X. Yeah. So your 45 is your fun. 45 is your, yeah, it's the constant. 45 is the amount that you would have if x were zero. Yeah. Well, we get some units on this. This is dollars. Uh, what's x in? <laughs> Let's say hours because uh, 18 dollars per hour. So this is in dollars per hour. So there's a rate of change. The slope of this line, this is a linear function, right? It's mx plus b. We put 18x plus 45 into mx plus b. This is a rate of change, dollars per hour. Y's per x's. Does that make sense? Y's per x's. The units of y divided by the units of x. Which would make sense because if this was on a graph, if we were to look at the slope, we would get rise over run. Well, the rise would be in dollars, and the x would be in hours. I guess I should have written hours dollars per hour, or whatever per whatever, right? The slope is a rate of change. It'd be 18 dollars per hour, 50 miles per hour, 35 kilometers per second, four inches per year, whatever. 
get the any rate of change of a y for x. Y is for x. Any questions? Let's run through these questions. How can you tell that a, if you're looking at the equation, when you graph it, you'll get a line? Y equals mx plus b. Y equals mx plus b. Uh, what pattern do we take advantage of? Rise over run, we call it a slope. That's the pattern that we use to draw a line easily. Right? When it comes to parabolas or cubic functions or what have you, we're going to have to use a different kind of trick. Right? We're going to find different kinds of key points. But for a line, you just need two, line, or two points. So you can find the y-intercept easily. You can find the slope easily. But you've got two points. Uh, find the slope of a line given two points. Two points, how do you do that? Plug, plug in zero. zero and the number. Just plug in two numbers in general. But I already have two points. No. And just count on y1, y2, minus y1. So counting up and over is essentially y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, how do we tell two lines are parallel? Uh, same slope. Same perpendicular. perpendicular. Uh, uh, same same slope. Slope. Neither. Uh, they're just two, two lines. lines in the middle of the one. No, the slopes are two random processes. And our slope, when we look at the slope, it's a rate of change of y versus x, dollars versus hours, inches versus year, whatever it is, y versus x. That's always what it is. And that's it. Thanks. So, how do you think you do it?